What's up, y'all? Listen, I got to tell y'all about Anchor. Anchor is one of the easiest platforms you can use to go ahead and make your podcast. First of all, it's free. Second of all, it's free. Third of all, did I mention that it's free? Go ahead and download the Anchor app inside your app store. You can go ahead and get your podcast on many platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and many more platforms. Anchor has all the tools that you need right at the palm of your hand. What you waiting for? Go ahead and download Anchor and start your podcast. Can you give at Marks with Mike's podcast a shout out? Shout out! Hey yo! What am I doing back? Bye 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 yo! Bye 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 yo! Are you kidding me? The irresistible force meeting the immovable object. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of Marks with Mike's. You already know where it is by the sound of my voice. That's right, it's your boy. This is six foot nine, JT, back in his piece once again. And of course, like we try to do every single Thursday, unless I get caught up or we get caught up with life, we try to release you all an exclusive interview um, of anyone. It could be an independent wrestler, it could be a legend, it could be someone not inside the wrestling business, but inside the wrestling business. But speaking of wrestling business, 2020 has been one of the roughest years, not just to the wrestling business, but period. Any business that, that you're in, you know, it's just been rough. But we're moving on to New Horizons in 2021. And one of the big things that's coming up in 2021 is OWA's Good Trouble. And I am definitely honored to say that I do have one of the participants on the card coming up on that card, which is going to be taking place, I believe, in Columbus near that area in uh, Ohio. And we're definitely going to be in the building. We have to be in the building. And I just have to say this. The guest that we have on right now is born in Kentucky. Um, trained at the Team 3D Academy. Um, uh, born in D.C., Washington, D.C. D.C., okay. Yes. So, obviously, they got that wrong. <laughs> Can't trust Katie's side. Uh, <laughs> but with that being said, I got to correct myself. Ladies and gentlemen, listen, you already heard a voice. You see a face. It is Trisha Dory inside the house. What's going on? Hey, how are you? I'm doing all right, doing all right. You know, laying in the cut like a band-aid, trying to make sure that I'm just cool and stuff. Right about mm-hmm. now. I'm old. When you hear stuff like that, just know that I'm old. You know, <laughs> body says that in 2020, but me. Uh, so <laughs> with that being said, man, I'm so happy that we got the chance to actually get this to, you know, make it happen because I, I've had my eye on you for a while. You know, far as <laughs> happy with the show. It's like, you know, you're definitely surrounded by good company. Some of the guests that we've had on the show, such as uh, Jocelyn, you know, Faye, um, Jazz, you know, and um, so on and so on. Um, Jim Nasty Boys, Timmy Lou, uh, just to go off those. But your name has been amongst the mix of people like, okay, I've been paying attention and this is someone I definitely want to have on my show, not because of what you represent, but just your overall essence. Like when I see you, I see home. You, you know what I'm saying? Like I see home. I don't see, I don't see, uh, you know, layered, you know, trying to, trying to, you know, paint a picture for what it's not. I just see home. You know what I'm saying? So definitely, you know, appreciate you representing for the culture, number one. Uh, number two, you know, definitely out of know first and foremost, since you did correct me at the beginning, um, from DC, you got to tell me how was it like growing up in DC? Um, it was pretty low key. Uh, it was me, my mom, my five brothers. Kept a pretty low profile. We're from uh, the southeast area of D.C., so keep it pretty chill throughout um, public school upbringing. <laughs> pretty typical around the area. Um, 
Nothing too crazy to report. Pretty down the middle. Okay, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Now DC has some some uh, very famous people from the area, or people that represent the area. One of my favorite artists is right now represents DC. Wale, one time for Wale. You know, <laughs> still bumping Sue Me in 2020, and I think that's gonna be my national anthem. That's that's like the next black national anthem for me. To be honest, I know, I know. Look, look no, I, I mean, some some people say, you know, I'm overboard. Look, we we gotta lift every voice, but I think soon it's gonna be like the the next version. But um, so you said you have five brothers and sisters. Five brothers. Well, five brothers. So you're the only. <laughs> yeah. Right, so this is funny because I have a sister, and she has four brothers, and she's the only girl. So. <laughs> So I definitely know where, where, where that lies at. So, you know, definitely being the only girl, having all your big bros around and, you know, basically you came up tough, you know, definitely came up tough. So speaking of uh, growing up, what was it about growing up, you know, as far as going through school? Were you into any sports or anything like that? Um, I kept a pretty low profile all throughout. Um, I feel like elementary and middle school is like kind of a blur for me uh just kind of i don't know just kind of went through a tough time kind of was bullied throughout so it's just kind of one big blur i wasn't really i don't know i don't think that i emotionally developed enough to be able to gravitate towards a sport just yet so um yeah <laughs> okay got you got you got you so while growing up you know you had interests and was wrestling something that you came across as like a safe place yeah so um it was kind of how we all bonded you know my dad and uh, my brothers would watch wrestling and i was i was pretty young i didn't really understand what was going on but they were excited so over time it kind of got me excited just just trying to understand like the magic of it all and seeing all the different characters and just just trying to understand what i was looking at really <laughs> It clicked one day, though. Uh, Jazz versus Crash Holly was kind of that whole feud over time was just kind of one of those wake up moments where I got to see somebody that looked like me. So it's kind of like just a blur of like characters and faces and then someone that looks like me jumps on the scene and I'm like, OK, <laughs> now I'm interested. So, yeah, and, and it's funny that you mentioned it because I, I swear every at every guest that I mentioned earlier, as far as, uh, you know, uh, Jocelyn Faye, they all mentioned jazz as that person that, you know, got them like into, you know, it, into it because, you know, we, we didn't have too many female black champions that was, you know, I, I guess, I guess you could say out on the, you know, the front. I mean, you had Jacqueline and you had jazz that, that was it. You know, those, those were only two. But man, it's just amazing how those two names inspired two generations of female wrestlers. Like that's something that's something that, that I look at. It's just amazing because for me, when I first came across Jazz, I want to say what year was two thousand. Talking, telling the story. Uh, so year was two thousand, <laughs> <laughs> and I want to say I had to be every bit of. 12, no, 13, no, 14, 14 going on 15, yeah, 14 going on 15, and I remember first seeing Jazz, well, I first seen her in ECW in 99, but I remember when I first seen her uh, come across WWF at the time, and I was like, oh, man, yeah, I I remember this chick, this this chick was knocking dudes out and everything like that, just to see her impact on the game to where she's at now. It's just amazing just to see it. So Jazz was that character that made you click. Uh far as once that clicked for you, were you like, okay, this is something that I want to get into right away? Or was it something that you kind of, you know, just more so wanted just to enjoy as a fan? Um, I knew right away. <laughs> you know, just seeing like Jacqueline um and, and Crash kind of tied up was just so cool to me because I had never really, you know, seen women be presented that way, at least in a way where it's kind of taken seriously in a way or kind of 
the context was a little different I'll say that and um just to see you know Jacqueline especially be able to like you know marry that whole that that whole evening gown and, and then the inner gender wrestling and just be able to like operate in both of those worlds and just excel it's just amazing to see so I saw that and I was like oh this is kind of interesting I beat up my brothers all the time and I think I can do that you know <laughs> And so after that, I was kind of like, oh, cool, I think I can be a wrestler. <laughs> but, you know, naturally, you don't just, you know, I'm not just 13, I'm just going to go be a wrestler. You know, you just kind of, you know, take a couple of loops and turns there. So Now, that's funny. So that's reversed because for me, it was me putting wrestling moves on my sister, but you <laughs> did those on your brother. Right. Oh, I'm, <laughs> listen, I, I know my sister, when she listened to this, she definitely be like, yeah, that's right, girl. You know, so are you, are you like, uh, so are, are you the middle child or are you the baby? Well, I'm closer to the baby. I have four older, one younger. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I, I, I remember, you know, putting my sister in the walls of Jericho. Yes. Um, figure yeah. four. Oh, my figure, gosh. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> You know, I, I I even went back to the Lion Tamer, the old school Jericho, yeah. um, the Manable Claw. This is bad. This is this is, yeah. this is child abuse. You know, funny enough, I was gonna say I got three D on my bed a couple times. Funny enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, man! I, uh, I, I mean, kids, don't try this at home. But I yeah, mean, really don't. We I mean, really I guess don't. <laughs> You know, if, if we can get viral people doing this on IG and Twitter, it's the sky's the limit for the kids out there. Uh, but seriously, get your, get your parents' permission. Make sure you're 18 and over. Don't say that we told you to do that. Disclaimer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, you know, getting 3 d um, putting wrestling moves on your brother. What, what, was there ever a time where you put a move on what, one of your siblings and, you know, you, you know what I'm talking about. When you put the move on your siblings and you heard them, you, you get that long that long little, you know, whine noise and that pause, you know, when they, ah, you like, shh. You ever had one of those moments? Actually, yeah. And, you know, funny enough, the the move is still, is still in my arsenal today, funny enough. <laughs> if, you, uh, if, you let, if you let my brother tell it. Um, I definitely, <laughs> I um, gave my brother a backbreaker when I was younger. We were just, we were shuffling around and I think we just kind of got serious and I just, I scooped them up and I picked them up and I just slammed them right on my leg. <laughs> I gave him a backbreaker and then my other brother just came in and like kind of scooped me up and like separated us and we were just like, I don't know, the energy was like, <laughs> something changed in the energy and I kind of just, Ooh. I don't know. <laughs> Look, you dangerous, listen. I... <laughs> The most most I ever done to somebody in a in a scuffle was a DDT, a back. My gosh! I mean, look, it was in sixth grade. I was gonna say it was in sixth grade. You know, they kept bothering me. I lost my temper, and uh, <laughs> one of my friends tried to hold me back. One of my good friends still to this day, Brian. I ain't gonna give you the last name because I don't want y'all to, you know, you know, basically I don't want to have all this, all this attention. But yeah, he tried to break up the fight. You say no, 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 JT, chill. Grab them. DDT. And this is this is inside the gymnasium. You know where, where they, you know where, where they play basketball at. So you know that hardwood floor at that That's night. How they sit home. <laughs> yeah, I got three days ISS for that one. Uh. <laughs> oh my gosh, definitely having fun here. So, so basically, you know, you go you go through high school now. Were you ever torn in between? Because at this time, you know, TNA across the late 2000s start stack up, you know, Jeff Jarrett builds, builds TNA. And TNA starts to bring women's wrestling to the forefront with the knockouts division, which if many people are, they want to be accurate, that was really like the first women's evolution. So... Yeah, that's the, that's the OG of, of, of the women's revolution, and you know you can't you can't you can't put those two words together without mentioning TNA and that knockout division. So far as the knockout division, was there anyone in particular in that knockout division that caught your eye? Uh, of course, let's see, Gail Kim, Kong, of course, ODB. Just 
strong women that were also like smart, sharp, very different from each other. Just very good crop of women too. And so, and even though when I started watching wrestling too, my scope was a little bit narrow because um, you know how it goes. A lot of times people are introduced to wrestling through the WWE lens. So, and then you just sort of branch out as you just start to want more or just, you know, just want to delve into wrestling as a whole. So um, I was definitely a little bit later um, on the, the TNA bandwagon, but very, very good stuff. I enjoy watching Gail Kim work. I think he's awesome. A pioneer, like in every sense of the word. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Gail, Gail Kim uh, literally made a lot of that women's division as far, far as, you know, working with a lot of those stars, you know, b- building them up. I mean, she got she got a lot of people over and she also got self over, but she also was able to build names, uh, you know, from the people that she feuded with, you know. You had people like uh, Angelina Love, you know, Velvet Sky, you know, the list goes on and on. But uh, so living, uh, leaving from TNA and everything like that, so at what point did you decide, okay, you know what? Let me go get trained. <laughs> this real. I'm tired of just going to the shows because I'm, I'm pretty sure you went to some some local shows or, you know, WWE shows if you got a chance. Uh, just a couple, not not very many. Um, I just kind of understood my scope of, okay, I just need to find a school. And I knew that, like, I just didn't really know where to go but Florida. I was like, shoot, okay, let me just figure this out in Florida. Um, I'm just trying to get myself situated uh, down there. And by the time I'm like driving down to Florida, I'm like, oh, I kind of didn't have everything all planned out. Like I didn't have the school picked out yet. I was supposed to go to a totally different school and not Team 3D. But I didn't even, until I got down there and like a month and a half in the thick of it all, I kind of got myself situated. Um, and I started to go to, to Team 3D. Uh, it's been a pretty cool experience throughout, but definitely that, that drive down, there was some, some questions <laughs> to be, to be had <laughs> on that long drive from DC to Florida. So. Yeah, that's a drive. I mean, I'm a, yeah. I'm a person that travels. I, I, I love people. Some people like to fly. I'm, I'm a person. I'll hop in the car. I like to see what's up. I know, some, yeah. I know certain cities and certain states just keep driving. Like, it's, you know, just keep on driving. Like, if, if you got to get gas, get gas now and get a gas keg. Don't even stop in this city. Just keep on going. Like, I know there are certain <laughs> cities like that. Trust in yeah. Especially if you get down in that little part in between Alabama and Florida, right? Keep driving. <laughs> keep going. Keep, keep driving. driving. Keep driving. Um, Talking about uh, love country, but um, what was I saying? So you know, you said you said some some of the things were questionable on on that drive. I can definitely imagine. So when you got down to Florida, that wasn't your first time, was it? Going to Florida, it was. Yeah, Ooh. my first time. Wow, first time. So I know yeah. culture culture shock over there because, as many people say, Florida is just a whole different breed of just people. Period. Me, no, I'm from Florida, born and raised, um, you know, from Boynton Beach in between Palm Beach County and, you know, Broward and Miami Dade. So we're like right, right along that. Yeah. So Florida's a different breed. So w- what was it like getting to Florida and like just, you know, looking around like what? Because you're from D.C., so you're used to a certain type of land, landscape, you know, feel, especially the streets. Street, you know, yeah. how traffic flows, like everything's different. I visited DC one time and I was amazed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it's like switching one touristy area for another. I was down in Orlando, so it was just more of the same as far as touristy ness goes. I stayed between uh, Universal and Disney. So um, nice and packed. The weather was pretty cool. I do miss that. Um, <laughs> That's really, I feel like that's it. I feel like that's the only thing I miss about for it. The food. <laughs> Did you forget about the food? True. The food was pretty pretty cool. Oh, man. Pretty cool. I do miss Kiki's. I for sure miss Kiki's. Oh, you know about Kiki's? Uh, Look. Uh, oh, my gosh. 
For y'all who do not know yeah. what key keys is, yo. <laughs> Put them on game real quick because if, if, if I talk about it, it's going to require some slow music and me talking in, like in this deep, very white voice. So, you, you oh go my ahead. gosh, I the waffle is literally this big. I couldn't even believe it. I, I, I sat down, you know, you look at everybody's plate as they go past, and these plates are just huge. And I was like, well, I don't know, I'll just get something little, you know, maybe I'll just get a waffle and you know, some eggs and some bacon and some potato. And they bring this whole thing out and I just, I ate and I just ate and I just ate. I couldn't believe how much food I was getting. Everything was so good. Ugh. And I love fresh Kiki's. And fresh. Yes. Everything. And it's always, no matter where, it's always about right, right? You always just have a good time. The food's always. Shout out need to to, they need to be everywhere. They need to like expand that. It's such a smart model. And oh. two, they close like at like 3 p.m. or something, right? So they'll be open like 7 a.m. to like 3 p.m. and that'll be like such cool hours too like <sighs> anyway good memories of <laughs> listen we see here reminiscing about Kiki's. Look. like listen shout out to kiki's if you don't know where kiki's at i'm gonna tell you like i do every single episode google that shit just put in kiki's inside the gps it's gonna pop up it's the best thing out there hands down yeah, y'all know I love Waffle House, but I love Kiki's too. Yeah, I was to say Kiki's is on top. They... Oh, that definitely on top, definitely on top. So you know, get down there, you get the training. So how was first of all your mindset going in? It's like, all right, you know, this this is gonna be tough. This is gonna be hard. What was it like taking that first bump? Oh, my first bumps look so bad. <laughs> you know. um, to be in wrestling shape is just something totally different. And uh, once I left, like, the system of school, <laughs> you know, once I left high school, I went to uh, college for a year. I played rugby uh, for a year. After that, I joined the Army. And so I was pretty physically fit, and I was able to, you know, hold my own the way I needed to. But having to be in wrestling shape was just something... I didn't quite fully understand until it's time to, you know, start working out in that wrestling way and you start to, to hit the ropes and take take those bumps and then you need your breath in a different way. Like I was just out of breath and just just the crazy way, you know. Um those first bumps were rough and they looked bad, but <laughs> <laughs> but um I, I wouldn't change it, you know. I, I really wouldn't change it. I, I really dig the road that I took, you know. Um I didn't just walk in and just be able to nail everything. <laughs> I don't know if that's the belief or not, but that was absolutely not the case. Uh, I definitely had my little learning curve and just kind of going through all of that and just kind of processing in real time, you know, moving to a different area, you know, away from the the army template. You know, it was kind of like away from those wake up calls and away from that, that structure, you know, it's just, just hard on all fronts. I hadn't lived alone at that point. There was just a lot of new things that was happening to me at the same time of me starting, you know, this wrestling journey. And there is a lot of pressure in starting the wrestling journey, or at least maybe I just put that on myself. Maybe I just put that on myself. <laughs> but, you know, I put that on myself as like, you know, just a black woman. I'm like, okay, I need to take this seriously. I need to you know, so I was just thinking about it always in a different way, just trying to make sure I was always representing the school well and myself well. And just, it was just all these layers. And then, you know, you just kind of get into a groove. So just kind of trying to navigate that all yeah, at the yeah. same time. <laughs> now, I can definitely understand. That. I mean, you know, we, we, we naturally put, you know, pressures, pressures on our, on ourselves to definitely, you know, be, be the one to represent because, the thing, the thing about it is, you, you know, you definitely know, you definitely know how slow, you know, if one of us make it, we all make it. So, it's yeah. like, you know, I want to be that one, like, hey, you know, you know, check out, check out JT, he made it. Hey, look, if he can do it, you know, I can do it. You know, to say the same thing, yeah. you, hey, check out Trish, she yeah. did it, you know, so it's like, if she can do it, I can do it. So it's kind of like that giving back each one, reach one type of thing. So, yeah, we, we put, we put pressures on ourselves. I mean, that's just natural, you know, it's just natural, but, yeah. you know. Pressure produces diamonds at the end of the day. At the end of the day, it produces diamonds. So pressure is needed. You know, this 
Pressure's needed in everything. Look at your tire. First thing you say, what? Tire pressure low. <laughs> tire pressure high. You need pressure. You gotta apply that pressure. You need it. No pressure. That means it's too too easy. You gotta have that pressure. Easy. <laughs> For sure. So, you know, you talk you talked about serving, you know, once uh gotta thank you for your service. Uh my mother in law is a vet herself, you know, so so is my father in law, but uh definitely gotta thank you for your service and uh, you know, thank you for putting your life on the line and protecting our borders and our country. So gotta put that out there. Definitely respect what y'all do. Um but once you got into that groove. And you were able to, you know, catch on to everything. What at what point in your career do you think that you said to yourself, okay, this is what I'm meant to be doing? Yeah, so it was while I was in Florida, just kind of going through the whole pay your dues situation. And I mean, look, you know, you always kind of pay in some way as you go. Um, so it was just me paying my dues in Florida, just trying to figure out who I was as a person, trying to figure out who I was as a performer, what did I enjoy doing, you know, um, it was presented to me in such a way, um, it's, at least in the Florida scene, you know, it's just sort of presented in this way that like, you know, there's only one real destination here, you know, it, it kind of just gets presented that way. And I've always shunned that idea. You know, I think that the destination is honestly my journey. You know, the destination is the happiness that I feel when I'm doing what I like to do. You know, when I'm, when I get to choose who I get to be and it's exactly what I want. You know, when I get to choose my trajectory, when I get to choose which companies I'd like to work for or You know, just people in my circle that are like-minded individuals, you know, all those little choices that you make, you know, I just never really took those lightly. And so, I don't know, just as I made each one of those choices, I hope I'm not rambling, I'm sorry. (laughs) But Oh, you're not rambling, look, I'm just listening to you, and it's straight poetry, so keep going. Oh, no. (laughs) Well, you know, as as I make all these choices, and as I take this road a certain way, I just kind of had to look at what I was doing I was like all right am I am I having a good time is this this one of those things where I just want to go back home and I said all right I think I'm all set on Florida for a little while um emotionally I wasn't feeling like myself I was going through a lot of things and just just a lot of changes and I was like all right I've been properly trained I believe (laughs) you know I you know, worked a little bit in Florida. I think I've kind of, you know, stretched myself out a little bit. I wonder what's going to happen if I move back home. You know what I mean? And I was like, all right, now look, if you go back home, you got to, you got to just keep the ball rolling. I just knew that I couldn't stop. I couldn't rest. I couldn't relax. I just wanted to make sure that I could transcend even back home, you know? I felt like I did okay in Florida, went back home, you know, sat down for a little bit. And I was like, all right. Oh, Ring of Honor. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and so you see that they, you know, Ring of Honor has a uh, a tryout. I saw that they had a tryout last year. And I was like, oh, perfect. I'll, I'll, I'll try that out. I wonder, you know, I wonder, I wonder. And the funny story about that is I was down to like my last 300 bucks. And it was either go to... The training camp and get all I could out of it or you know there's this bill that I was supposed to be paying <laughs> that was about 250 and I was like uh what do I, I do, <laughs> do you know and, what you know, funny enough funny enough whenever it comes down to like wrestling and something else I always pick wrestling you know what I'm saying <laughs> so that's when I was kind of realizing like oh okay these are the kind of decisions that I'm willing to make you know for wrestling and I just need to make sure that once I make that decision that I absolutely pay it off. You know what I mean? To make sure that me going in that direction and not another was wasn't, you know, a waste. And when I tell you it was not <laughs> it was not. I couldn't you know, I laugh sometimes that I could even humor 
that I would ever pay a bill and not wrestle. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's just gotten to that point where I'm just like, pay a bill? What's that? You know? Eels. But, um, <laughs> ooh, <what up>? <laughs> you don't know her. <laughs> no, but I mean, you know, obviously now I'm in a better groove and I can obviously manage more. But at the time, I was just, I had to pick and choose. And when I made that choice, I knew I was like, yeah, I have to do this then. And I got to keep doing it and I have to attack this. I have to keep going when everybody's tired. I gotta keep going when I'm tired. When the lights go off and everybody's like ready to hang it up, I gotta keep going. I gotta mentally keep my battery full. I gotta emotionally keep my battery full. That's like my superpower. That's how I work out, you know what I mean? <laughs> In a sense too, you know, to keep my mental and emotional batteries nice and full. About the same as the physical, you know? It's like such a such a there's so much involved with this, you know, um, and just coming back home just made me see that it's important to keep those things close to you, you know, keep your mental health about you. It's so important. And I'm able to, and I think I was able to just tap into just myself and my environment and in just a way that I didn't before. And it just changed how I view wrestling, changes how I view the world, you know what I mean? Changes how I view myself. You know, and I hope that, you know, that comes off in everything that I do. And I don't know, it just, and then this February with this, you know, winning the uh, Pan African World Diaspora Championship in DC, you know, in my hometown, it just felt like that beautiful cherry on top that, yes, everything, you know, that I risked, you know, everything that I gave up, it was absolutely worth it, you know. Moments like this make me make me go, okay, yes, I'm meant to wrestle. Absolutely. Oh my gosh, man. That set the internet on fire, by the way, when that <laughs> happened. When, when, when I tell you Twitter, IG, Facebook, Snapchat, like it's <laughs> everywhere. You know, MySpace. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I'm yeah, hit me up on my MySpace. I don't know my password, but I'll figure it out. But yes, that thing set the world on fire because, but you know, when, when I seen the picture with you holding that title, when when I tell you, like it was like the first time seeing that image in wrestling. Period, to me. You know what I'm saying? To me, I don't. I, I, I don't care what anyone else says. In my opinion. Seeing that image and that image that went out, and people gotta understand it, it's it's deeper than wrestling. It's deep. It's deeper than that. You know what I'm saying? Rick, Rick Ross says it's deeper than rap. It's it's deeper than wrestling. The message that is sent out to girls that are coming up looking at this, that may be younger, or even girls that are around uh, around your age group, to see you in that light. And the way the way it was presented, beautiful. That was beautiful. That moment, because the outpouring of love that you got from that was so so like for me, just reading and seeing the comments, it overwhelmed me. You know, so I'm just sitting there, I'm like Jesus. <laughs> it's like this this moment was huge, you know. And to me, that holds weight. That definitely holds weight. So I I appreciate that. You know, I I appreciate you saying that. I just it's just such a crazy uh, I can't even explain it. You know, it's just it's like you can hear yourself think and then like all of a sudden you feel like you're just underwater. You know, you just hear that water in your ears and you just hear like screaming and you're just like oh. It's just like my throat was like starting to close. I was just kind of so overwhelmed by the moment. It's like my eyes started to sting like halfway through the match. And I'm just like, all right, just, roll with this. just keep it together. Halfway through the night, honestly, that entire night, just the tournament going all the way up. Just, I just, I remember it all so fondly. And it was really dope because my mom was there too. It was awesome Aww. to be able to like, yeah, it was awesome to be able to like, 
you know, show her what I've been doing all this time. I feel like I'm just away all the time. I'm training. I'm, I'm shut in my room and I'm like, hey, I'm doing a podcast. And you shut the door and I'm away for a couple of days. You know what I mean? <laughs> and it's just like, you know, they kind of don't really know in a sense what's up. And just to kind of show her this is what I've been working on, you know. And that this is what's been going on and this is what wrestling is. And hopefully we can, you know, keep it, you know, in D.C., you know, keep that Grapple region nice and strong. So, yeah, it was, it was so cool. It was so cool. I mean. Oh, but I don't think I brought it up. Hold on. Bring it up. Yes, please, please. Oh, oh my gosh. That is <laughs> very beautiful title. Very yeah. beautiful. Um, and to win it mm-hmm. home, Chocolate City. Of all places. Yes. 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 Shout out to Chocolate City champ Billy Dixon. Love you. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I mean that that right there. I know that that for no matter whatever you do in your career, this <laughs> moment right here, I don't think anything will top it in your mind at all. Like look, like you can headline, you can headline. Uh, you can headline uh, AAW or you know WWE <laughs> pay per view. You'll mind that winning that title will be your best moment because where where you wanted at being home, having your mom see it. You know, it, you know our, our 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 parents and siblings don't don't really know what we do. Like you know what what yeah. um, it's, it's it's not like they pay attention. Like I got. I, th- I got family and friends back home. Hey, uh, you, uh, you you still doing the DJ thing, right? I'm like, no, nah, it's, it's a podcast. Yeah. You know, I'm not spinning records. I'm not, I ain't doing none of that, you know. It's, I'm, I'm having a conversation, you know. So to, for, for her to see it, uh, did, did your mother have tears in her eyes? Yeah, she was so thrilled. There's actually... <laughs> There's going to have to be a director's cut of uh, one of those matches. Uh, I'll put it in a book maybe later on, but there was a very funny moment that my mom had during the match, during one of my matches that night that uh, will live on very fondly in everyone in attendance memories. <laughs> but just know she was ready to go if I needed her help. <laughs> but uh, we'll, we'll keep, we'll keep that in a director's cut. <laughs> but um, it was... It was dope. It was awesome. Uh, you know, even still, um, Johnny, I don't know if you know Johnny Cross. He's the um, promoter at Fight Club. This is actually his his baby, Fight Club in general. We uh, deployed together, actually. That's how we met. We met together in the Army. And we would talk about doing stuff like this. I would talk to him about, like, yo, maybe I'll be a wrestler. He's like, well, you know... Be careful because you know there is no spot for us. And I was like, well, you know, make a spot for us then. And it's, you know, little conversations like that, you know, where we just kind of, it almost feels like we're just saying it, you know? And then one day you get a sketch and you're like, well, I wonder what you think of this. And I'm like, a belt? He's like, yeah, yeah, for the company that I'm going to make it. I'm like, oh, so we're actually doing it. Dope, dope. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like one of those things where it's like you say it and then you start doing, you know? And it's just so cool to see his dreams come true as well. You know, hearing him talk about how much he, you know, wants to have a, a safe space, you know, for, you know, LGBT wrestlers, a safe space for, you know, wrestlers of color to, to work and not feel like they have to be something else or, you know, not feel like they're not in control of how they're perceived. You know, that's, that's so, there's so much power in that. You know what I mean? There's a direct line between like, how good you feel about the work that you're doing and how well the work is going to be, you know, and when you have, you know, low morale, it just shows up in every way. And I just, it's not the case at Fight Club. There's just, the vibe is just different there. It's so cool there. It's so cool there. It's such a, such a great place to work for. And I'm happy to bear the flag, you know, I'm very thankful for that. So. <laughs> and you, you hit the nail on the head to have that control of, how how I should say like uh guiding got in your own ship in in a sense. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's it's okay to, you know, sometimes let some people take a little bit of reins, but you're never gonna feel as one hundred percent confident as you being the one taking the reins. Like that's that's almost like, you know, you're you're in the car and someone with, with someone else and they're driving your car. Like you're right. you're not gonna feel comfortable <laughs> 
Oh, wait. Well, yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, watch out for that blind spot. Right. Yeah, you know, hey, that's the turn to sitting over there. Hold on, turn down my radio. Don't blast my system, Mike. Exactly. You know, it's like, you know, man, I'm, I'm speaking in metaphors. That way people can understand what we're talking about. But, you know, being being able to, you know, have that control and once again, ha- having a place where people feel safe, they feel like they can be them and, you know, j- just be able just to pour out what's inside of them and, you know, give it out to the people that's either watching via Internet or in, in attendance. You know, that's something special because you really can't get that not too many companies Period. What, what, whether that be mainstream or not, and everyone has their ideas on what they want to do with you. But what about the ideas that I have inside my head that I want to present to people? You know what I'm saying? Right, right. And that's that's the most important part. Um, so this moment happens, then that epic picture that that you took with everyone that partic- participated on the show. Uh, that was oh my gosh, that that one was another one. And then, you know, we we end up having events happen in uh, 2020 that was supposed to happen. Uh, Then the pandemic hit. And put a break. It put a break on a lot of people. Uh, I think the pandemic, you know, definitely gave people a lot of time to reflect. Yeah. One, you know, you have people calling you that probably ain't called you in forever. Like, you know, new number, who this? Like, (laughs) Exactly. Like, I, I, heard, I heard you since middle school. What's going on? Like, yeah, you know, right. Stuff, stuff like that, and it made it made you definitely want to, you know, check up on people. But it also made you want to do some self reflection. Uh, but also during that time, people also streamed and binge watched a lot of TV and music. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I. I, I do understand, you know, you you had some bookings during during that Mania weekend in Tampa. Uh, I want to say one of those was for the culture, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. No, 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 no. I'm trying to think, which show was that? Not quite. Actually, no, it was not for the no. culture. No, no, no it wasn't for the culture. It was but a blur. But uh, it was a total of six bookings, and none happened. So, <laughs> there's that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, once again, it's almost like going back to that point what you were talking about earlier between choosing between wrestling or paying the bill, which is funny because a lot of people actually did the same thing with the PS5 and the Xbox with paying their rent next month. So, uh, find out who has a place to stay come January 7th. Um, I, I chose my room. I don't have an Xbox uh, or PS5. So grown up decisions. But during during that pandemic, you got the chance. Was there anything in particular that you did as far as streaming or, you know, as far as series or movies or music? Or did you do a, do a lot of reading and uh, self-reflection? So um, uh, there's like so many things. I really made a point to delve into what my life would be like outside of wrestling. So I made sure to just attack some things that I liked, some hobbies that I was into, you know, things that I enjoyed. Um, My younger brother uh, plays chess and he's been kind of teaching me that since, you know, the pandemic kind of started. So we've been kind of bonding over that. So it's been pretty interesting. And funny enough, the parallels... (laughs) The parallels between, you know, just the mindset you have to be in in chess and just how, you know, I think about wrestling. It's definitely made me a sharper performer. Absolutely. You know, it's made me a sharper thinker and just a sharper human being overall, you know. So I've definitely played a lot of chess. I've made a point to get a lot of rest and just to take care of my emotional and mental health. Just all the things that we're lacking because I'm just too busy running around and just in everybody's face trying to be booked and whatnot. I'm like, girl, look, <laughs> the world's on a pause. It's all right. We'll take it just a mini break. We'll reassess and we'll attack it another way. You know, so um, in the downtime, though, I definitely got to um, play a little bit of chess and just kind of understand that game. And just oh, it's like such a such a big world, you know. Yeah, I mean, most people play checkers. Smart. <laughs> yes. 
And the people that can't play chess or checkers play Uno. Um, I so, know, right? <laughs> speaking of Uno, we, you know, Uno showed out during the pandemic, throwing out all these official rules. Yeah. You know, it's like, I think you know how to play. <laughs> no, 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 no. That, damn, damn, all that. Listen, I've been playing Uno <laughs> since since 1991. I, 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 I kind of feel like, you know, if, if y'all just telling me this now in 2020, you making this up? You you you, uh, you, rules, you know because I was I was taught you you could do triples and doubles you know you can do drains you know you can you know you can you can throw out that draw full and then throw out like that's the way I played so you you're not gonna just come here and just switch everything up which is kind of what 2020 did for yeah, really. everybody during this pandemic it switched everything up so you know. Moving on to Brighter Horizons uh, coming up next year. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. But before we even get to that match, uh, I always tend to ask these questions. And, you know, some people say that it may be kind of um, left field, right field, middle field, mm-hmm. how do you feel? Um, so if you could face any, any wrestler, Past, present, um, who would it be? And I want you to give me three and a reason why. Oh, three. Okay. Got it. For sure, Jazz. That's just, that would be full circle. That'd be hella cool. Just being able to tie it up with another tough black woman that inspired me to get in. I mean, that'd be dope. I still see her out here, you know. She's out in Texas doing her seminars and whatnot. And I'm like, yeah, all right. We'll see you on the retirement tour, I hope. <laughs> or something. I want to link up with her at some point, you know, at least to pick her brain, if nothing else. You know. um, let's see. Hmm. I'm going to maybe say, I'm going to say Kong. For sure. Okay. For sure, because, you know, I'm just trying to get thrown around ever so often, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Nothing wrong with getting thrown around. No, but um, I definitely love to tie up with, you know, some of the greats, you know, in our industry. I know a lot of times when we talk about, you know, our favorites, you know, they tend to, to you know, not look like us all the time. So I for sure always want to run it back and go see what my queens are up to, you know. <laughs> Um, hmm. see, it'd be awesome to tie up with Mariko Yoshida. She's a Japanese wrestler. Um, retired at this point, but a girl can dream. She really inspired a lot of like my movements in the ring. Just watching somebody just just purely move, you know. Um, a great a great technical wrestler I believe so definitely those would be my three I think I'd have pretty good matches so. <laughs> okay okay good 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 I like that I like that choice okay so next question this one is um, totally unwrestling related okay if you had to name three artists that you have to have in your playlist who would they be well, for sure, Jay Z, definitely. He's got a nice big catalog, nice diverse catalog. I'm feeling like, I'm feeling like, I feel like I'd take some Whitney with me too. Oh, for you sure. got that. Whitney. Whitney got yeah. a Jay Z, Whitney. I think I want to have like, I think I could round that out. I think I'd make that nice and round by saying, I think I want Michael Jackson or Janet Jackson. I can't decide. Jessica Jackson. I know, right? <laughs> right. Um, it's not Tito. Yeah. yeah, probably, probably not, probably not. But you know what? Let me, let me run with Janet. Yeah, Jay Z, Whitney, Janet. I like that. Those are those are just knee jerk. Those are just knee jerk. Yeah, yeah. I like. I mean, you know, that's that's a pretty good catalog. I mean, you got. 
You got 80s Janet, you got 90s Janet, and you got yeah. current Janet. You know, you got Jay Z, huge catalog. I mean, I like it. I like it. Nice little list. Nice little list. All right. Okay. Next question. Unwrestling related. Then we will get to promoting your upcoming uh, match with OWA. So here we are. Unwrestling related. Favorite comedy of all time. Top three. Ooh, comedy. Let's see. Liar, liar is always a safe bet. You know, I love a good Jim Carrey movie. Nice and slapstick, easy to laugh at. Relatively timeless. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, Shoot. Let's see what makes me laugh. Um, hmm, I hadn't watched any good comedies recently. I watched some comedy specials, and those are always pretty fun sometimes. Okay, all um, right. Maybe the last two Chappelle ones, you know? Oh, um, yeah, yeah. Let's see, throw those in there for sure. Hmm. Yeah, that'll round it out. Yeah. That'll round it out. <laughs> so I don't think too long. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Chappelle, man, Chappelle is timeless. It's just even going back to his early, early stuff, even even mm-hmm. before Chappelle show, hilarious, hilarious catalog. You got you got to go back to Def Comedy Jam. <laughs> you got to go back. Right. Before, <laughs> you got to go back before killing killing them softly. Softly. Like, he got he got a huge catalog of uh, of jokes jokes for days and. He's always evolved with the time, but he's always been a conscious uh, comic. Major thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's kind of, kind of stirred that mind. Yeah. That's the blueprint right there. You know, he's in charge of himself very fully and he understands what he has. And I'm like, that's when you know you're winning. Perfect. Perfect. All right. So, at the part of the show, we're getting ready to talk about the next upcoming event. Which is, of course, happening 2021, New Beginnings, which everyone wants. But it's going down, everybody. It's going down January 30th, 2021. Ohio Wrestling Alliance, OWA, presents Good Trouble. And this is actually um, a show that's dedicated to the fight of civil rights activist John Lewis as well. So definitely another part of why I'm here at Marshall Nights, which is why we're sponsoring the show. Because the message behind it, and you know, I have a little connection to Selma myself, uh, with my father being from Selma, uh, and my father's side of the family. So that this is coming up. So when when you got the call about this, instantly, I'm pretty sure the promoter was like, "Who's the person that you want to face?" And <laughs> you went ahead and you told him right off back who you wanted to face. So with that being said. Was it a was it hard getting you to hop on the the concept of the show, or was it like I'm in? I mean, that's too easy, you know. <laughs> it's it's too easy, you know. If I see something for us by us that I think is going to handle our story with the care that it needs, so it doesn't feel handy or feel like we're being pandered to, then I'm with that all the way. You know what I mean? That's that's. How I choose my bookings overall, you know what I mean? I just kind of through that lens. So a show like this, I'm all about good trouble. So <laughs> um, I jumped. I was like, yeah, let's let's go. <laughs> let's, let's go. Let me know when. <laughs> and you chose Don't Die Miles. Now, he's a he's a name that has been kind of buzzing inside my ear. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, he's definitely been uh, making his way inside the game, fresh to the game and everything like that, but man okay, I got some knowledge Are you ready? Yeah, for sure Are you oh, ready? for sure, for sure you know, I um, I see him as a very you know, experienced up and coming high flyer, and me as a, a technical, you know, more of a ground based wrestler, I definitely want to to exercise those rights there and just see what that's all about you know, you want to go up and I'll put a high flyer down any day. So I 
looking forward to it. <laughs> you know, that whole don't die miles. I mean, look, we'll see. You know? <laughs> we'll see. I mean, look, with this with this on the line, I mean, we'll see. Right. <laughs> I mean, you know, that that's 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 saying right was that plus it just it, matter of fact it go it go good with the outfit you got on now. It just seemed like it fits you. <laughs> I don't think it's going so well. You know, that's that's you all day. Okay, so this is going down everybody. OWA good trouble happening January thirtieth. 2021 new year new beginnings and you don't want to miss it uh you're definitely supporting a good cause this is a car for us by us i mean there's plenty of people on these cards majority of these people have been on the show before and you know what i'm talking about you know we got people on the card like trey trey lamar we have people on the card like uh pb smooth o'shea edwards uh you also have on the card lee lee moriarty uh, Jonathan, Jonathan uh, Grisham is going to be there. Uh, you also have uh, on the uh, card, Lexus uh, Montez is going to be there. Uh, Myron Reed is going to be in the building. AC Mack is going to be in the building. Listen, there's more names that I can name off this card, but just based off the names that I just named just now, I don't think I really need to sell this to y'all any more than I need to. Tickets are available. You can definitely get your tickets. You can follow Ohio Wrestling Alliance on IG and on Twitter. Uh, their handle is very easy to find. It's basically Ohio Wrestling A1. Follow them on IG and Twitter. You get the ticket information. Meet us down there. Beat me down there because, listen, I, I tend to show up. We we tend to show up late. I ain't just going to say me. We, we tend to show up late. You know, so the start time... On that car, we made it extra early. That's because we really gonna start at another time. You know, you know that's how we 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 do. You know, <laughs> hey, look, it. You know, you know that's how we do. The bell, the bell time, bell time is at seven. Doors open at six fifteen. So if I were y'all, I get that like around five thirty. You know, just just to make sure, just to make sure you you know you're able to get your seat, get your food, all that stuff. But the show definitely gonna start around seven. Just gonna let you know. So you got two hours to to mingle, or whatever, and all that. But you don't want to miss this car, people. Listen, I'm driving from Cleveland straight there, little road trip. Y'all, let me okay. know if anybody want to link up. Hit me up in the IG, hit uh, on the DMs. Hit me up in Twitter on the DMs. Let me know. We can uh, take a little road trip and we'll go down there. But we definitely going down to see what's happening at good trouble because it's for the culture it's for us you know this is fubu you know for us by us uh i feel like feel like I, I should definitely break out my fubu jersey matter of fact i may just order me a fubu jersey if they still have them off of amazon prime just the way it, yeah i'm going back <laughs> fubu or fat form oh okay. <laughs> South Pole. Do I got the echo? Echo. <laughs> South Pole. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I'm going back. Listen, I'm mm. going back with some beat with some uh, British uh, British knights and BKs. <laughs> I'm going back. But listen, I definitely had so much fun with this uh, interview. I mean, this wasn't even an interview. This was just just kicking back. <laughs> Just, just getting to know each other, you know, the energy, the vibes, uh, definitely there. Definitely appreciate it. I can't wait to meet you in person and yeah. definitely be at the merch table, get us some autographs, everything like that. But let the people know where they can follow you at on your Twitter and your IG. Yes, that's Trish Adora 202. That's on Twitter and IG. Now, that's very simple. Uh, if y'all don't get the correlation with the 202, Google that. <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't here to educate y'all. Y'all Google that. That's, that's... But uh, <laughs> make sure y'all y'all do follow her. Definitely, you know, if any merch does come out, it's all available on, on both her social medias. Make sure yeah. you support, support local, support all these independent uh, wrestlers, um, you know. Hey, like she said earlier, she made a decision. Either wrestling or bills. She's no <laughs> wrestling. Okay? A lot of y'all right now maybe listen to this podcast inside your car because you chose your PS5 or the Xbox <laughs> over rent. Okay? Listen. Smartly choose wrestling. 
It's very simple. Make sure y'all there. Make sure y'all in the building. But before we get out of here, um, I definitely have to let people know. And, you know, this is my message. I started the message in 2020, but this message goes on and on for, throughout the rest of my life. Listen, we got to slow down these negative vibes and start putting out more positive vibes. Okay. Too much negativity can have you unbalanced mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and physically. Spread more positive vibes. It takes very little to build someone up than it does to tear someone down. I know that's backwards, but think about what I'm saying inside the logic. Very, very easy. Spread more positive vibes. You can do that. Very simple. You can do that just by doing sun nice with somebody. Or if you want to go to my merch store, you can. You know, it's very <laughs> it's very simple. Purchase a t-shirt, positive vibes only. You ain't got to get it for you. Get it for someone else who may be going through sun. Them seeing that positive vibe only, looking down on that t-shirt, that hoodie, that tank top, whatever, may be reminded to keep on pushing and keep on going. So definitely spread more positive vibes. And um, before we get out of here, once again, as we close out on every show, Slow down the spread of COVID, people. This is very serious. We lost a lot of people uh, due to COVID, people's family members, people that you may know, someone's contracted COVID that you know, someone's beat it that you know. Maybe you even caught COVID. But it starts off very simple. It starts off with good hygiene, okay? So the first thing we're going to need you to do is wash your hands and wash your ass. Use soap. And in the words of my co-host Cheech, make sure that you're doing it from face to ass, not ass to face. And on that note, we out, people. Peace. See ya. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh. That was so fun. That was so fun. Uh, <laughs> I, had to, I had to keep it at the end. I was going to like, i